Hi, I'm Madeline, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you the crochet chain. I've gone ahead and started with a slip knot on my hook. I'm using a 5mm hook with a number 4 weight yarn. Now my yarn actually recommends a 6mm hook, however I crochet on the looser side so I've gone ahead and sized down to meet the gauge that this yarn recommends. So when we're looking at this, this here that is not connected to anything, this is the tail end of your yarn. This yarn that's connected to your skein of yarn and where you'll be pulling from is called your working yarn. Now, as far as how tightly this slip knot should be on your hook, you want it tight enough to where it doesn't fall off, but loose enough so it glides nicely over your hook. If this were too tight, you can almost see and hear how tight that is as it's dragging across your hook. And then on the other side, if it's too loose, it's able to just fall off. So you want to make sure that you have a little bit of a space here in between your yarn and your hook, the, the bottom knot. So there's a little bit of space, but it's on there. It's moving around, around quite nicely and it's not going to fall off. How I like to hold my yarn is I take my working yarn, I drape it over my hand, and I wrap it around my index finger two times. The reason I like to do this is because it allows me a nice amount of space to work on because this is kind of my working space right here. And I can also control the tension. I can control the tension by hooking my finger around it. I can control the tension here. I have two spots of contact where I have contact between my index finger and my middle finger where I can control the contact. And if I want to crochet something a little bit looser, what I just like to do is I will then only wrap it around once. So I only have one point of contact there then and it'll be a little bit looser. So this is the way that I have found the most comfortable. And again, I'm just taking my working yarn. So here's my tail over here taking my working yarn, wrapping it around my index finger two times. And then this is my working yarn where it's going to be, where I'm going to actually be pulling from. It's coming up this way. Um, and then I hold my hook and then with my ring finger and my thumb, I secure my slip knot here. So I'm going to just be holding the bottom so my hook can still move. My yarn is controlled here and I have a little bit of control of the tension. It's taut, but it's not, it's, it's, there's a little movement in there. It's not too tight. And what you're going to do is with your hook in front of your yarn, so here's my yarn here, here's my hook, you're gonna take the notch of your hook, point it away from you, and catch it. And as you catch it, you're gonna rotate your hook to where the notch then points down. Because if you look, there's, a, there's no space here at the top to pull anything through, but there's a little space here at the bottom. So that's going to be the easiest way for you to pull that through. And this is a very kind of unnatural and, and at first uncomfortable position to place your hand. So it definitely does take practice and getting used to. And the reason I teach this method to have your yarn behind you and then catch your yarn and turn is because if I just catch my yarn and I stop here and I'm trying to pull it through, my hook is then going to catch the loop that's currently on my on my hook. That's why if I rotate it all the way down to where the notch is facing downward, it glides through much easier. So again, hook in front of the yarn, notch facing away from you, hook your yarn, and pull it through. And as you start to build your chain, you're going to move your thumb and your ring finger up. Now, you also can just literally take your yarn, place it over your hook, and then pull it through. So, take my yarn, place it over, and then kind of grab the whole thing and pull it through. I know a lot of people that do it that way. Um, however, what I notice is that the tension tends to be a little bit different. You don't get as 
consistent tension throughout. But if that's the way that you're most comfortable doing it, then that's the way that you should do it. Because ultimately, your crochet projects are going to turn out the best when you're comfortable. Now, I actually for years used to crochet very tightly where I would almost have this grip on my yarn to where when I was pulling it through, I was just really struggling to get it through. And I had this very tight chain here. And you can even see the difference compared to my first part to this part here. Um, it started to hurt my hands. I was using way too much pressure. And then that's when I really started to figure out the difference in sizing down on my hooks, um, the difference in the choosing the yarn that I wanted to use as for different projects, um, to be able to crochet in a place that was most comfortable for me, which is right here. And then you just do your desired amount of chains to start your project. Now, one thing that tends to happen is if you have a chain, um, your chain can get um, twisted. Now, that'll usually happen. So you, you take your hook out, you take a break from your project, you come back later, and when you insert your hook, maybe it's not the same direction you had it before. And then now, as you're going along, you start to notice that there's a bit of a twist in it. because this is the front of your chain. It almost looks like braids. And then the back of your chain has these little bumps here on it. These are the back bumps of the chain. So if for some reason you got a twist in it, now all of a sudden you have your front and then this twist right here, and then it goes to your back. The only way to undo that is to undo that. Um, you cannot fix the twist, like you cannot untwist a chain without undoing those chains. One thing that I have always done that helps with this is I make sure that the front of my chain is facing me at all times. When I insert my hook, I make sure I'm not going in this way. I make sure I'm going in from the bottom and that my yarn is kind of on the top bar part. So here's, this is what's connected to my chain that's making these other chains here. And that's the bottom part of the yarn. And then the top part of the yarn right here is what's connected to my working yarn. So that when I go back, I have my chain facing me and I know that my yarn and my hook are in, in my hooks inserted in the right position and my yarn is facing the right way so that I can come back and have a chain without any twists in it. And then you're just going to chain um, whatever amount of stitches that you need for that particular project. And if there's a little bit of unevenness in it, you can kind of smooth that out as well. If it's a little uneven, like each each uh, chain is not 100% consistent in tension, you can kind of smooth that over as well and it gets it a little bit better. And then once you're finished with your chain, the desired amount of chains that you need, then you can go ahead and start the first row of your project.